I have spent around 400 hours in Stardew Valley. This was my first time playing a farming sim game, which meant I was unaware of many of its game mechanics. And that is why it took me around seven and a half in-game years to get the statue of perfection. I learned so much from my mistakes, which I made during my playtime. So I like to give you guys some tips so you also don't make the same mistakes. Some of the tips you may have already known, props to you for that. And others might be new to you, which would mean I did a good job of finding and sharing them with you guys. So let's get started. Using sprinklers around Junimo Hut in this way is inefficient. You see, Junimo Hut has a reach in 17 by 17 squares of tiles. Wait, I'll need the Stardew Planner to explain this. <clears throat> so, the Junimo Hut has reach in 17 by 17 square tiles, which is 289 tiles. The hut takes 6 tiles, so we are left with 283. Normally, we would place all the sprinklers in this way. That leaves these areas unused. At first, it might not look much, but if you count it, you are leaving around 83 tiles here. If you planted ancient fruit here, you won't be using those tiles. Depending on the fertilizer and your profession, this crop takes around 2-4 to four weeks to fully grow. The base price of ancient fruit with tiller profession is around 600 gold. And we harvest this crop once every week. So every week we are missing around 50,000 gold. In a month, we would be losing 4 times of this amount, which would be around 200,000 gold. That's a lot of money. To fix this, we would need pressure nozzles. They increase the capacity of iridium sprinklers from 5x5 five five square to 7x7 seven seven square. They can be bought from Mr. Key's Walnut Room on Ginger Island or would be rarely dropped from Monster in the mines. Upon doing little adjustment, I came up with this arrangement. With this setup, we have three unused tiles. I left the middle tile vacant to give our friend Junimo some space to breathe. And out of remaining two tiles, one should be definitely used for Deluxe Scarecrow since normal Scarecrow won't be able to cover this whole area. Back to the game. Placing sprinklers in this way is very very tricky since we neither see the range of the hut nor of the sprinklers. But it will be rewarding. And I know the misaligned sprinklers can cause some serious discomfort in some players. But it is what it is. Okay, I am done with Junimo huts and I promise the upcoming tips won't be this long. You can set up beehives in this part of Ginger Island. Kegs and preserve jars produce the lowest quality of product irrespective of quality of ingredient used. I learned this very late and in the most brutal way. I placed an iridium quality of star fruit in a keg only a week later to get a normal quality wine. Mistakes were made. The last rule applies to cooking as well. The buff you get from food is irrelevant to the quality of ingredients that were used. Do note, you can use Key's food seasonings to increase those buffs by one level. The quality of gift actually matters if and only if the gift is either light or loved by the NPC. Additionally, giving an iridium quality of loved gift to an NPC on their birthday increases the friendship level by 4 hearts. Don't change your profession and ship items on the same day. Obviously, I'm talking about the items that would be affected by your desired profession. The reason why you shouldn't do this is because your shipped items don't receive the bonus on their selling price. As you can see, I paid the statue to change my profession. And now I'm going to ship these items. The game shows the option for choosing profession at night followed by total earning of the day. I went with artisan profession since I am shipping artisan goods, but none of them received 40% bonus on their selling price. I always assumed that since we changed the profession first, it would activate and increase the selling price of the artisan goods. <laughs> and I'm sad to admit that I did this for one whole year. 
I am never gonna financially recover from this. So that was it for this video. I have so much to share, but I don't want to make this video too long. So I'll continue this in next video. And if you have any tips regarding Stardew Valley, do let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and I will see you in next video.